All right, continuing again with UEFI stuff here. So I'm loading a kernel, I'm printing ACPI and other info, at least the beginning of it, not going into the tables too deeply for processing that would be better spent on device setup by, you know, a kernel itself. But what is remaining here before, say, making an installer or something? I want to make sure that we have actual full control over memory, and I want to remap my kernel or my loaded file to somewhere higher in memory than it currently is. So I'm gonna work on that, setting up paging and a new global descriptor table and setting that and remapping the kernel and, and things as needed. So I wanna work on that. Um, I removed the kernel from the other thing, so I don't think it loads right now, which is kind of a bug. Yeah, that's all zeros, so let me fix that. I'll just copy that. So it works again, okay. So I only added a couple lines. Yeah, on my laptop, there was a lot more ACPI tables. There wasn't quite like 24, but I just added a thing to pause every 23 just in case. And I put a to-do because I need to make sure I check for partial shutdowns on uh, on exiting boot services. So I did have somebody, I think um, Hamish or Hamas, I don't remember. But a while back he mentioned this, so I'm going to put this in finally, <laughs> probably a few months late, but that's all right. So if we exit boot services and there's an error, then there could technically be a partial shutdown where some things are shut off, but not other things regarding the boot services. And if that happens, there might be an error and you should try again regardless. So I'm going to put in a thing for that and I'll just say we have like a retry count. And while we fail at exiting boot services, I'll increase that. Maybe a while loop would be better. Make a slightly more sense here. So I'll just say while we're erroring, so while EFI error on getting this stuff, could have done a partial shutdown. I'm gonna free the memory that was allocated, which should be free pool just on the map itself, and then I want to get it again, which this will do. So I'll do that, and we will need to get the memory map again after freeing the previous map. So I'll just have this again. Go to clean up there, I can make these one-liners. And I'll increase the retry count. So we'll do that. If it passed all the retries, then that is not good. Uh, so I can add a check for that. Let's say less than five or 10. We'll just say five tries right now. I think I've done 10 in the past. It doesn't matter too much, but if it can't shut down five times in a row, something's probably a bigger issue is at hand in the firmware or whatever. So I'll do that. So free the pool, if we can't get the memory map again, that's not good. We'll increase the retry count, we'll do this. And if it reaches five, that's not good. So I'll say, just put a constant here. I have a max retry and if it equals that, then that's not good. an error right yeah let's put an error there we'll say could not exit boot services okay all right so what do I want to do I want to set up paging I'm gonna to try to do some more smaller functions for things I think the only other thing I changed was making making actual strings for some values within the ACPI header just while I remember that, that was the only other thing going back and forth here in my brain. So ACPI spec in this section 2121, it, it lays out a similar ACPI header in these. These things are actually strings. It has it labeled as char. So I just did that to be, you know, semantically show that they're not singular, you know, int values. They're actually supposed to be strings. I think that's the only thing I changed there. But the ACPI code is the same. Uh, but all right, so setting up paging, there's different things that 
already have page size, that's good. We can check for that. There's a few different things that we can set up here. Um, as far as physical memory, there is a limit. I was looking at font stuff for the future. GDT, paging. Does this mention? Yeah, 52 bits. So right now, since long mode requires physical address extension or PAE, uh, the maximum physical bit size that an address can be physically, not virtual address, but a physical address is 52 bits. So 52 bits of physical address space. So I'm just going to add a mask for that. The lowest 12 bits as well. Say for, can I zoom in? There we go. <laughs> Is this level five? This is level four paging that I'm gonna be supporting, 64-bit long mode, x86. There's five levels of pages. Uh, the maximum physical address is 52 bits. Right now for level four, 48 bits of the virtual address will be mapped to 52 bits of a physical address, but I'm just gonna have a mask for that. A little bitwise value. I was looking for another page I had that showed the bits. It's probably on. OS Dev Wiki, one of these things. Just look at this one. Yeah, the lowest 12 bits for any entry, so the actual page itself, the lowest 12 bits are set for flags, so we have to ignore those for an address. And then everything above the architectural limit of 52, it can have flags, but for an address, we can ignore that. So I'm going to have a mask just for the 52 actual bits that correspond to the address. And in 64-bit mode, each you know value as a data type is going to be eight bytes. And for a page table, for a page directory, for a page directory pointer table, for level four, which I zoomed in for everything now, <laughs> for level four, all of these things are going to be 512 entries of eight bytes each, or 4K, 4096, 512 times eight. So at minimum, we'll have to allocate four, eight, 12, 16, so 16K, basically. So I can do that. This doesn't say, I, sh I should have laid out my sources better for this video. <laughs> but basically there's, there's 512 different entries. Yeah, 64 bit entries, which map to each lower level page table. So I'm gonna set up some data structs that work for these. There's also canonical addresses, which means everything above the top bit that is supported. So usually right now, 48 bit virtual address space, everything above the top 48 bits has to be the same as the 48th bit for a canonical address, or you can get a page fault or a protection fault. I think my other page showed that. No, I didn't. <laughs> this one has canonical form. Yeah, there we go. So bits 48 to 63 have to be copies of 47. So we have these, these canonical addresses here where you don't have valid virtual addresses or physical. Is it virtual or physical? Virtual address. Okay. So you can't have virtual addresses in between this range and you can't use them at least without getting like a protection fault or something. So really you're kind of limited to four gigs on each space or well, a bit more, but... Anyway, that's something to keep in mind. You have to keep the addresses canonical. If you're using level five paging, you have 57 bits of virtual address space to work with instead of 48. They both map to 52 bit physical, but the virtual is expanded by another nine bits for another page table. And you can get away with a lot more space there, but I got to take these things into consideration for paging as well as other stuff. So anyway, let's have a, a physical page address mask or adder if I want to concatenate everything to the four four things here so we need up to 48 well let's just say one two three four so i have 16 so this will be the four the full um eight byte address that we could use but we don't want to we want to map off and stop not taking the lowest 12 bits because those are going to be flags and then the highest up to 52 so 48 12 16 20 24 28 32 36, 40, 44, 48, 52. So the top 12 bits I'm not going to use either. 53 to 64. But the middle ones are going to be valid. So 52 bits. Physical address limits. Lowest 12 bits are for flags only. I'll just say that. We have a page size already. So I should also have a type def that I can move into the 
the other headers and stuff later. Um, I guess I'll put type defs above the variable definitions right now. I'll just do that. So we can have a struct or a plain array for these page tables. Um, I guess I'll name it Pascal style, I guess, kind of. I'm going to make a struct just because it's kind of a little easier and I've seen just you know, tutorials and other pages online usually use a struct for this. But we'll have eight bytes each of entries inside of a given page table and we'll have 512 of those. So 512 times eight is 4k and each page table, page directory, page directory pointer table, and the level four page table that we're going to be using are all made up of 512 64-bit entries. So this will be used for all of those page tables. And if you want to do level five paging, you'd, you would add another one of these page tables. So we'll do that. The top level page table, I'll have be PML4, and we can just make it a pointer. Top level four page table for, I'll just say long mode here. And we might need other variables later, but right now I'll just do those. Right, so we have paging, and we have an, an initial pointer that'll point to one of those eventually. We'll have to move that into register CR3, control register 3, to set a new paging table setup. So CR3 points to the top level of paging that you want to do. If the CPU is set for level 4 paging, which we are in by default pretty much, even though UEFI doesn't say that, for 64-bit x86 here, we can assume for the foreseeable future right now that we're in level 4 paging by default. So the level 4 page address is on boot pointed to by CR3. So the firmware has its own setup for identity mapped long mode paging. If we want to set a new thing for paging, new page tables, we have to move our own level four page table address into CR3. So we need that set up. If I want to set up paging, I will need to be able to allocate and deallocate or map and unmap addresses virtual to physical. So I can do that, but I'll have to allocate pages in order to map addresses. So I should probably do that first. And I guess I'm still putting everything in one file, which isn't great, but <laughs> oh well. So my load kernel function, I'll do it before there, we'll say. I'll just do it above there. So I have a thing, we'll say allocate pages from available UEFI memory map. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this and just allocate and map things, probably... All of this will be after exiting boot services, so I know we have full control of memory. And I don't know if I want to call it EFI status. I could just call it, um, if we're going to return a page, I'll return a void pointer, which I know there's, there's capital void, and I haven't been doing that, but oh well. I'm used to this <laughs> right now. I don't want to think about it. If we don't have a page, I'll return null. Conflicting types, because I called it that. So let's say allocate memory map pages, or memory map allocate pages. So I don't go along with the boot services allocate pages and don't get confused from that later. We'll do that. And I'm not sure if I need these to be global or not for, uh, for variables. I do want to keep values between function invocations for this, because I want to kind of I'm going to make this a bump allocator, we'll say. So stuff in the EFI memory map has different types of memory, like conventional memory, which is probably what I'm going to limit this to. Uh, memory that's available to be used that isn't reserved by anything. So that's all available already within the EFI memory map. So I can look through and see with each memory descriptor in the EFI memory map a certain amount of space that's available or reserved. So if it's a, a freely available type, like conventional memory, then I can see how much data is available within there, and if it corresponds to the amount of pages I want to allocate for something, then I can just return that range of pages, or a pointer to the start of that range of pages, or a pointer to that uh, memory descriptor or something. So I'll do that within this function. I should make sure that stuff still loads and works. All right. Just wanted to do that, because I have to exit boot services so that that retry code is working that I put in. Okay, but I'm going to make some, I guess, static, because I want them to keep their values between invocations, or I can make these global variables. That's all right. But I'll say we have a next page address, 
which could be a pointer. Maybe that's what I'll return by default. I'll start it off as null. We'll have available pages, the amount of pages within the current memory descriptor that we're taking addresses and pages from. So this is, I'm gonna say technically not allocating more, but returning available page addresses. Yeah. I don't know, pre-existing page addresses. Okay. We'll have a next address that we'll be returning as part of this sort of like a bump allocator. I'll say how many pages are left within the current descriptor that we're looking at, which means I need a descriptor. So is it just called memory descriptor? I don't remember. It's probably in all caps. Yeah. I'll use these types right now. So I have a current memory descriptor we're looking at. That I'll update as needed, and I'll have the, the amount of pages that are left within that descriptor. So I don't know, available pages, I guess. Okay. So I'll say next page or range, next page or page range, page range address to return. Current descriptor. Say so using this as a sort of bump allocator. Okay. This will be remaining. I could call it remaining pages, I guess. That might make more sense. So remaining pages in descriptor, right? In current descriptor. So I'll use these for that. Okay. So if I don't have anything by default, I'll have to return data for that. And I need something to look through. I don't have the memory map as a global, so I can pass that in. So I can pass in, yeah, memory map info. Pass in a pointer so the struct data is not needed. And if I don't have anything to begin with, I need to allocate something. So we'll say if we don't have any pages left in the current descriptor, then I'll go and look for the next one. So if that's zero, no remaining pages in current descriptor, find the next available one. I can do that. So I can look for code where I looked through the descriptors because I'll be doing some of those loops here like this. So memory map over descriptor size, which that's going to be passed in. That is a pointer. So I have to make those arrows instead. And I'll grab a descriptor from there memory map that I pass in. will be there. Of course, I have a current descriptor. So maybe I could name, I could make this a uint n instead if I want to loop through with i. I'm not sure how I want to do this. <laughs> yeah, let's make this, I'm going to make this a uint n right now. Actually. Current descriptor number. Because then I, I can start on with, with that descriptor. So I can be current descriptor. Okay, so I'll do that. Out of the total descriptors, we're on the current one, and we'll get, we'll start at that for finding a new one. Yeah, so I'll do that. So allocate pages, I need a memory map. I need the number of pages to allocate. So let's do that. I need to check if the current descriptor that we're on, which this should probably be plus one, because we know the current one doesn't have any remaining. And I'll have a thing after that. Let's say if i equals that, then we're out of descriptors, because it's less than that. So I guess greater than, greater than or equals fine.
ran out of descriptors to check and memory map. Okay, so I need to check if it's if the memory is available as well. Probably can put an error there. Could not find memory to allocate pages for. It's probably all right. I don't know if I need an initial one. That's fine. Okay, return null from that. Uh, okay. So let's see if it's current memory that we can even use to begin with before checking if we have enough memory to, to return. So if the descriptor type, is it type? I don't remember. <laughs> 5.h if I memory type yeah so descriptor has yet yeah, type okay so let's say if it's EFI conventional memory then there's there's more than that that we can use but I'll just say that one's specifically for just free to use memory so I'll say if we have free to use memory then I'll check what it has so it's conventional memory if it's not then we'll iterate and try the next ones So lay, let's say description, I think it's number of pages, yeah. So if number of pages is greater than or equal to our current number of pages that we're looking for, then we found memory that we can use. So that's good. Then I can set the current descriptor equal to that descriptor. Well, it's equal to i here. So that'll be equal to i. Remaining pages will equal the number of pages right now. Not enough memory to use at this descriptor. Use it. Okay, and then the next address I can use. So the next page address in this case would just be wherever this memory starts at which would be the physical or virtual start. So virtual start by default is zero for everything, pretty much. So I can use the physical start because everything's memory identity mapped rather to begin with. Physical and virtual would be equal. So I can use the physical start. Okay, so if I do that, I can do this in two steps, minus the current number of pages, because we're gonna use that many pages and we're gonna return the address. So this is the address we're going to return, and then if I allocate beyond that point, I want to make sure that we start after that point, I think. Yeah, because it, it would be used if we return that. Yeah. So let me do that. So number of pages minus pages. This is what I'm getting, this is what I would return in this case. Of course, I need a, a void pointer there because that's going to be a just a UNT in or an EFI physical address type. And then I'd want to increment next page address as well by the number of pages here. Yeah, that amount of... Okay. So we have the physical start, and then I'm going to add on pages times equal the page size because that's going to be 4K. Okay, so that way... I would return the start of memory that we can use that's available for this amount of pages in the memory map. And then the next time I call this, we would start checking after that range because that's already been allocated at this point. I want to start after that range by skipping past the number of pages that were allocated in this present call. So future calls would start after that range that's being returned, being returned here. Okay, if we couldn't find anything, I'll return. That's fine. Return null. So if remaining pages is greater than zero, then we can check. So let's say if it's zero or, or really just less than the pages that we want, probably. That would work. Because this could be zero and we have to find the start, or it could just be less than the current 
and we'd have to find the next one anyway. So that would work. So else we'll have at least the number of pages that we want to do. That means I can just return the next page address. The, the descriptor doesn't have to change. And the number of pages can decrease by the amount that they pass in. So that'll be all right. So else we have at least enough pages for this allocation. Uh, return the current spot. in memory map, which would just be basically checking this stuff again. Don't have to change the current descriptor. The remaining pages would be subtracted by the amount that we're allocating. The next address is what we would return, but I want to add this as well. So I could actually have a thing I could break and then, no, no, this, this would work. We'll just set this to next page address, which is, yeah, void pointer. So if that's a void pointer, I can't do arithmetic on that. So I'd have to do this, and that's okay. <laughs> Time, times page size, not times equal there as well. That would have been bad. So physical start plus pages times page size. Make sure that that happens first, and then we'll add it. Yeah, and then I'll convert that to a void pointer, and that's what will be returned. Well, that's what will be set for the address. Okay, if we do have enough pages, I just want to subtract it from the current address, and then bump the current address by that amount that we're allocating here. So I wouldn't, I can't do plus equal, I guess. We can do, we can do that again. So physical start, it wouldn't be physical start, it'd be plus wherever we're currently at. do that. Uh, I could do plus equal. Hmm. I'll just convert it to a, a byte-wise pointer. So the current page that we're at, plus the pages we're allocating times the page size. Okay. Yeah, and then making that a, vis a physical pointer. Yep. Or a, virtu a void pointer. Okay, so we'll bump the next address to go to. We'll return the current one that we're at, and we'll subtract the number of pages we're allocating at that current address, and then this will still point to the one that we can start checking for future calls to this function. So I think that'll be all right. Else we would return null if we ran out here. Yeah. So that should be okay. Compatible pointer types, because I need a U for char 16. Use of undeclared identifier. Yeah, that's outside there, okay. Just remove that, okay. So I'm not using this yet, but make sure stuff still works. Okay, so if I can allocate pages, assuming this works, I should write tests and stuff, but assuming that this works and I can allocate pages from the given memory map, I can then use that and we'll say map pages. So I can start setting that up. So I'll say map a virtual address to a physical address. Or a page of memory. So I know I have that page table type up here. So I know where these are going to go to. And I know I can allocate pages, so I'll have to map pages as well. Everything's identity map starting out, but I'll probably just go through an identity map everything anyway, just to make sure that it's not changing too much. And then your kernel or loaded program can remap things as it wants to later on. Okay, so how do I map? stuff. Well, I know the first 12 bits are for flags. Uh, the amount of flags that, or well, the flags that I would want to set, defines or otherwise, can be present. Present is going to be the first bit, I think. I don't remember. 
I don't remember to be honest. Yeah, first bit is present, then readable, writable, then user space or supervisor, which is sort of ring zero kernel or ring three user space. The other ones I'm not going to mess with. I could mess with available ones or dirty bits or execute disable for long mode we have if we want to look at permissions or capability stuff later, as well as protection key. I'm not going to mess with those really, though. I'm just going to check the first three bits here. So I'll have present, which would be, I can do it like this. Present, read, write. And user or supervisor. We'll say user, because if it's set, then the user can do it. That's bit 0, 1, and 2. So we'll say we have flags. By default, those will be ints. We can make it we can make it an enum. Yeah, I can do that. Well, I'll just make an enum here. I can change this and put it globally. That's probably all right. Since I put sort of constants up here. So I could have put it on the left because I had that open. <laughs> Most full bits say bits uh, 11 to 0. Okay. Forget if I need, do I need semicolons and not commas? I can use commas there, okay. So we'll have those and Each table structure will be 512 64 bit entries per table level. I wanted to go back to where I was, that's alright. Okay, so I'll have flags by default. I guess I'm not going to change that. Can have to be present, ord with read write, uh, ord with user. So I called it user, right? Yeah. So the first three bits will be set, right? Should be that or seven. So I want to. I'm going to identity map everything, probably, and I'm going to map all the pages with the permissions of being callable from user space and be readable, writable, and make sure it's present so we don't get page fault errors after setting a new page table and accessing anything. I think that should cover it, and that just ensures that everything is at least readable, writable. Because by default, EFI might not make everything readable, writable in in the memory map, even for available loader code and loader data and things. It might not be writable if it's code. It might only be writable if it's data, for example, and it might not be callable from ring three, which doesn't really matter at this point, but I just want to ensure that those happen. So the bits that are set for each level, this is just this first page table. So like this, for example, really we're looking at, tw yeah, first 12 bits and then, okay. So after 12, nine, so the next nine bits that you can start at are going to be for the page table. So basically you can shift over by 12 and then the remaining bits zero to nine or zero to eight in that case would be for a page table sort of offset into this overall address. If you shift over another nine bits or 21 bits, you'd have the address for the page directory shift over another nine bits or 30 to have the page directory pointer table address. Well, which is really an offset. And then another nine bits or 39, you'd get to PML four. If you had PML five, level five, you'd shift over another nine bits or um, 48, yeah. Right, 30, 39, 48, yeah, plus nine. And CR three points to an address for that level four table. And that'll be all right. So we can have offsets for these, which I know there's types for physical and virtual. I'll just do U and N because right now they're, they're gonna be the same probably. So we have a PML4 address, and below that we'll have to offset within an initial address to get each one of these tables to walk the, the page tree, as it were, and map the page. I'll also want to take in values, let's say physical, physical address, and virtual address. Okay, so below PML4 we have a page directory pointer table. So this will be an offset or an address within a given 
within the given virtual address or just shifting that address over by a certain amount of bits to get the address of the tables within the address. So like here, a linear address, 64 bits within that, you can shift over and these things are effectively offsets within that address, but they're also kind of, yeah, basically they're just offsets within that address. And that's how the processor, the memory management unit walks the page table. It takes the address you give it for a virtual address, say 10,000, it shifts the bytes over effectively and says, okay, well, this is where this PDPT is located. Within that, I can take the address shifted over another nine bits, and that's where the page directory is. I can take that address shift over, shifted over another nine bits. That's where the page table is, and again, to get the page within the table. So that's kind of what I'm emulating here. So we'll take the our initial virtual address that's passed in, and I'll shift that over by a certain amount for the PDPT. That's going to be 39. If we had a level 5 table, then this would be PML4, and I'd shift over 48, but the top level within the PML4 that I'm looking at is going to be the one underneath that, or the page directory pointer table. So 39 bits should get that, and then the page directory and the page table should have to do this, I think. Well, we'd have to get an offset within... Do we have to get one within the PML4? I forget. I might be one off here. Okay, yeah, I'm probably one off here, so I need... If I'm going to treat these not as addresses, but as offsets within each of the tables, it would make more sense to do that. So I'll do that here. So I'll have a PML4 index, which will shift over by 39. And then since there's only 512 possible entries within each table, we can also and that value. by 512 or 1FF because 200, 200 is 512, but if we want to limit it to 0 to 511 because zero-based indexing, we can AND with 1FF or 512 minus 1. I didn't want to do that many. 3P, thank you. Then we can get PDPT index within that table, which will be nine less bits. Then we have under the page directory pointer table, we have the page directory, page directory table, and that is nine bits less. And then we have the page table itself. To get the page within the page table, we can just shift over by the flags, which will be the initial 12 bits. Okay, so that is all right. We can make all these constant or not, it doesn't really matter. I'm not gonna use the values. Okay, so if we're gonna map a page, we wanna make sure that it exists first. And if it doesn't exist, then we have to map that in first by allocating. We have to allocate it first, rather, and then map the page into the allocated address. So if PML4, which is a pointer, we can get the entries from that, from this struct up here. So page table. We're getting page table pointer, so I have to use the arrow. So each entry be 0 to 511. So entries according to the index. So we're looking for the page directory pointer table within the level four table to make sure it exists before going through that table and so on to map, to map the page. So we have to make sure it exists first. So make sure PDPT exists. If not, then allocate it. Yeah, so if it does exist, it will be there. And we can check if it's available by checking if the present bit is set. If the present bit is not set, then we need to set it we need to make sure it's present, so I'll do that. And make sure it's not, so I need to add the not. Okay, so then we can allocate a thing here. So let's say PDPT address, this can be an address. Which right now, it can be a uint in. I might change that, change this to an int value in a second, but I wanna allocate a page given, we need a memory map to go through all these two. So memory map info and map and allocate pages and map allocate pages rather. Fix in the memory map first and the amount of pages will map one. And then I need to set that within the index. So PML4 entries, PML4 index. 
is going to be that address. I should also make sure that we're returning the physically mapped address, and then I don't have to worry about it, probably. Because that should be set from here anyway, though. Yeah, yeah, no, it'll be a 52-bit valid address, so never mind. I was thinking whether I had to mask this off, but since allocate pages, everything within the EFI memory map should already be a valid physical address if they're identity mapped to begin with, so I shouldn't, I shouldn't have to worry about that. So this is a value we can make uint in if I do it this way. And that'll set the eight bytes within here. I guess I could do uint64 to make sure you know it's 64 bits, but that should be okay. Okay, so I want to do that and I want to set the flags as well. Make sure it's readable, writable, and user. So that way the 8-bit address, the 8-bit value at this index within PML4 will be correspondent to a page directory pointer table that is present, it is readable, writable, and user space can call it. Okay, so that'll be all right. And I can also make sure it's zeroed out to begin with as well. And since they're all, well, I could do size of instead of that. PDPT, well, besides a page table, which would be PML4. Yeah. Eh, make more sense to do this. This should be 4K. So yeah, we'll zero it out and then we'll just or that with flags. But the address itself won't be zero. So this is basically a pointer. Yeah, I think that'll work. And then we'll just repeat this sort of three more times or two more times. So we need the PDPT as well, but we don't have the others. Yeah, we'll have PML4, but we won't have the other page tables here. So I'll say, I'll say that. And this will basically be what this is. PML4 entries here, except that's going to be an eight byte value. So I have to convert that to a page table pointer. Okay. And then the PDPT will have entries and those entries will correspond to the PDPT index. And if that's not present, then I need to make sure that that's available and allocated for the page directory table within the page directory pointer table. Okay. And this will be the PDT for page directory table address. We'll allocate a page. We'll mem set it and we'll set that within the page directory pointer table for the page directory table there with the flags. Okay. And then we'll do that for the page table within the page directory. So page table, this will be the page directory table that we may have allocated from here. So we'll get a page directory pointer table to the, well, we'll get a page table pointer to the page directory pointer table index. That corresponds to that, I think, yeah, because that's PML4. And we're setting it at PDPT, so that's here. That's page directory table. So it's a page directory table with its corresponding index. So similar to the others, if that is not present, if the flag isn't set, we need to allocate and make sure that that's set for a page table entry within that page directory table. Page directory table entries, page directory table will be that page table address. And then we'll map the page within that. So we'll have the page table in the page directory table. Yeah, we'll map the page table in the page directory table. Uh, only if it's not present. I guess if it is present, then we won't want to remap it. So I'll just map it if it's not present. Or if I over map it, I could flush the TLB cache for the page. I might just do that if we unmap pages. Yeah, I'll just do this. And the PT index is just, yeah, shifted over by 12. And we'll map that in for the page, and that will be the physical address, the actual page. Word with the flags. 
Yeah, so I'll do that. Let me make sure that these are... Uh, I didn't call it that. What did I call it? Fizz? This glider's flat. Okay, so I want to make sure that that one has the lowest 12 bits not set, because we're going to set it from the flags anyway, and that should be okay. Put this as a bool. Uh, this could be void, I guess. Uh, but okay, the other ones, if I'm passing in an address that has the flag set, I don't want to check that that's part of the index, because that's not going to be correct, probably, for some of these. I mean, it might not matter, but... Yeah, I should probably check that. Okay, so the PML4, that's going to be okay, maybe. But these other ones, I may want to and with the physical address mask, just to be sure. Because I know the PML4 should be a valid one. These ones might not be. Okay. So that's not too bad. We're kind of walking the page table ourselves, being the manual memory management unit, triple M, U. But basically, I'm getting the offset within the address corresponding to the correct page table that we need to map the pages in. And if they're all present, we just map the new page. But if any entry is not present, we have to add a new page table at that level, which is the size of 4K, the size of a page, effectively. But that's all I'm doing here, is setting the next level if it's not there yet, allocating a page and setting its data for each level in the page tables. And then for the page itself, I'm setting it in the correct page table, which the page will correspond to the physical address that we're mapping a virtual address to. So the virtual address we're offsetting to get the page tables. The physical address is the page we're mapping to that address, you know, at the bottom level here. So maybe still kind of confusing. It, it took a while for me to wrap my head around it. I'm not the best at explaining, but... That should be okay for mapping a page. Unmapping would be pretty similar if you want that. It'd be unmapping a virtual address. Unmap a page or virtual address. We'll say given a memory map and we can get these same indexes here. And I can get these things here. Assuming that they exist. If any of them don't exist, I should return early, probably. But I'm assuming they exist. So then I would just wipe out the data in the page table, effectively. Right? Clear page in page table to unmap the physical address there. Or you could just set the present bit to zero, really. That would work too. And then I'll unmap the page. So let's say, or not unmap, um, flush the TLB, translation look aside buffer, cache for this page. Otherwise, it might still think it's valid and try to access it and not give you a page fault and stuff would be bad. <laughs> so I don't want to do that. I want to make sure that the MMU sees that the page is no longer valid, so it will give you a page fault if it's tried if it tries to access it later on, uh, before you remap the address at least. So that is invalidate page. I'm going to do that within assembly. And I think that takes to an, an address within a register. So in at and syntax, we can do it like this. No output. Uh, do a new line so it counts it as a line. No outputs as input. We'll just have it be in any, in any register. And it'll be the virtual address. I think, yeah. Well, it'll be whatever this was. Yeah, we'll just, we'll, we'll invalidate that virtual address that we're unmapping. I think that's correct. And maybe I do memory here. I don't think I need to, though. I think that's all I have to do. Okay. 
that'll invalidate the page that was mapped to that virtual address after we wiped it out in the page tables. Okay. So if I can map pages, and we can set an initial page that we allocate for PML4 by calling, excuse me, by calling allocate pages, and I can map pages, we should be set to set up new page tables. So I can do that. I'll do that within, or call that from my uh, load kernel function probably before I actually call the entry points here. So this is after exiting boot services. I think I can do that after, that's all right. So let's do set up new paging tables. Well, new level for paging and tables. So PML4 again is, I can initialize that as well. That's just a, a global pointer there to a page table, so we can set that initially to allocate, and allocate pages returns a void pointer, which can be cast implicitly in C, so that's fine. Given the memory map, so that's kparms mem map map, or it's just memory map info, which would be this. Yeah. I think, I don't remember. <laughs> if I lie. Yeah, kernel parms is memory map info. Yeah, so kparms.mmap would be fine. That's what I'm passing in. And that takes in the memory map. And then the number of pages, yes. Okay. So number of pages will be one, so that'll be setting the initial top level page table by getting a page from there. I can have a separate function probably Let's say initialize new paging setup by identity mapping all available memory. I'll say that. So I know that EFI does this already, but at minimum, if I identity map the same stuff, I will at least have readable writable permissions set within the page tables. So it may be good to do this anyway. I'll have another function for this. So I'll say identity map EFI memory map or something like that. I'll pass in kparms.mmap. I could have this be in this function, be in this function as well, but that's that's fine. Uh, I'll just say page table. Then any map this. So in this function, I'll I'll call allocate, and I'll put a thing here to do other other stuff after. So let's do that. Okay, I'll put it after here or above. I can put it after because I'll have to be calling that function. So I'll just put it above the kernel. Uh, copy that description, that's fine. From EFI memory map. Okay, so I'll call this whatever I called it there. Identity map, EFIM map, I'll pass in the memory map. All right. Still be void for now. So how would I do this? I would loop through everything and identity map it. I guess I can set up identity mapping as well, which is very simple. Uh, let's say virtual equals physical address. Identity map page, because I called this just map page, yeah. Given a virtual address or physical, I'll just give it an address. And I'll give it the memory map info as well, because I have to pass that on. And that can just be, I could make this inline, it's just a one-liner, but it'll be fine. Yeah, we'll just call map page with the address twice, <laughs> so it maps the same address to itself, and pass on the memory map. So that's, that's very simple. So to identity map everything, we can loop through it. Let's say, go to allocate pages, we'll loop through it with this stuff. 
do uint n i equals zero. So all of the descriptors within the given memory map, which I'll pass at the EFI memory map to start off, that'll be all right. All the ones within there, I will identity map the data. So I'll call identity map page. I call it something else. Identity map EFI mem map. Am I calling things different thing? Oh, that's this function. Yeah, <laughs> never mind. So identity map uh, the address for the given descriptor, which will be the physical address, and we can just make it equal the virtual address. So physical start. And that will map it to itself, but we also want to get all the pages within that given descriptor. Which would be number of pages. Yeah. So I can do physical start plus J, and if we're doing an address, we'd have to convert it to a page address, which would be times the page size. Okay, so it'll start out at zero, so this will be zero. We'll just do the start of memory for this descriptor, and then for the next page, it'll be four kilobytes after that, and then four kilobytes after that, four kilobytes after that, until we get to all the pages offset from the start of memory for that descriptor, and it's guaranteed to be contiguous for these descriptors. So that should be all right. Move it over there. So I think that'll be okay. That'll be all the descriptors within the memory map. So this will be stuff where we can map it if it's not reserved. I mean, I can map everything anyway. It doesn't matter. But there's, there's also stuff within the runtime services to reset the runtime map. So what I can do is probably identity map everything that isn't the runtime memory. Or I can just do this right now and then do that after. Yeah, I'll just have everything be identity map. That's fine. That's fine. So it doesn't this like address was not declared void identity map page. Oh, yeah, I didn't do that. You went in. Passing info of incompatible type PML4 because that is a pointer. That's fine. What is the issue there? Unused parameter? Oh, that's fine. Oh, here. Oh, well, I can pass the address. When I allocate pages for PML4, yeah, I need to pass the address because it takes in a pointer. That's true. Um, okay, there we go. So I'm not using unmap page, I guess. I probably don't need to take that there. That's fine. This is still... Still loads the kernel, all right. That's true, I'm not using it here. So I can do that, okay. All right, so that works. Okay, so identity map, EFI memory map. So after that, if I want paging to work for identity mapping everything, I can also explicitly set the runtime memory descriptors for the runtime services and remap those and call set virtual address map. So that would be in the runtime. Can't type E S C R. There we go. So runtime services. I don't think I'm calling it yet. No, set virtual address map. That's what I need. So let's get the EFI. It's looking at how to get fonts a little bit. If I can do that later, it would be in runtime. Uh, miscellaneous, virtual memory, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this stuff. And I'm gonna put it below get time. And this is if I set virtual address map. Well, they don't give it a name there, do they? <laughs> That's all right. I think this would be the name for it, so I'll call it this. It is 841. Okay. Because I'll have to put it there because they didn't name it correctly. Because why would they ever do that? If I API, if I set virtual address map. 
Why would they ever type things in so that you can use them without changes? I don't know. Okay, so we give it the memory map size, descriptor size, and version, and the virtual map. That's how we call that. Runtime services, I have at the bottom somewhere here. Yep, up here. Let's do set virtual address map. Okay. Okay, so I can call that from another thing here. Let's say set up runtime services memory, or I'll call it, I'll just say identity map, runtime services memory and set new address map by calling that. So I'll make a function for that. Say so set, I don't know, set runtime address map. Okay. Yeah, I'll just have that be separate. Runtime memory descriptors only to use for or to use with runtime services set virtual address map. Okay. And this will make sure that the firmware knows where runtime services are set because they might not have any virtual address map. And after we set new paging tables, it might be better to do this. So firmware knows where it's at so that things are all right there. So I can do that here. Okay. So I can go through all the descriptors again. <laughs> it's not the most efficient stuff doing it multiple times. That's okay. Could have combined these functions. But that's all right. So all the descriptors here, I'm going to say first get uh, amount of memory to allocate for runtime memory map. So I'm only going to have a memory map for the runtime descriptors only, not everything that isn't runtime memory, because the, the, the UEFI spec isn't really clear on whether this address map has to be only for runtime addresses. It just says an array of descriptors which contain new virtual address mapping for all runtime ranges. That doesn't say it can't include everything that isn't a runtime range, but I'm assuming it means you probably should only use runtime ranges in the map that you pass into this function. So that's what I'm going to do, and you can only call it after exit boot services. So that's what I'm doing. The call must be done with physical mappings and everything's identity map to start, so that's okay. It must make function calls with those newly assigned virtual mappings. If I identity map, it doesn't matter. I can use the same addresses, so that is all right. And I should do other stuff as well. Because set virtual address map and convert pointer will not work after this point. You should zero them out and re-get the, the CRC, but oh well. So I'll go through, let's say, runtime descriptors and for all of these memory descriptors I don't know if it's in the memory type I don't think it is oh yeah we have runtime code and data that's true or we can check if it's runtime memory I thought I could check runtime memory by checking the bit but I don't think I have the bit set But I think that's in the memory descriptor code. It's somewhere. I know there's like bitmaps somewhere in this stuff. Here we go. Yeah. Memory attributes. So EFI underscore memory. Do I have that in here? Mm, I don't think I do. No. Well, I can put those in here. So that's under... That's just EFI memory descriptor. It's under there. Okay. So I'm going to copy all of these just to have them in there. These types can be ordered together as needed.
Okay. So the memory attributes is in the 64 bits or 8 bytes. Should I move that above? My head's not in the way. <laughs> it's in the attribute field, or member, of each memory descriptor. So I can check descriptor arrow attribute. And if I and that with runtime, if the top bit is set, then it's runtime memory, and it is a runtime memory descriptor, and that should correspond to the EFI memory types of runtime services code and data. But I can check, you know, if I don't want to do comparisons against each one of those types, I can just check if the top bit is set here for runtime. So that's what I'll do here. So for each descriptor, if descriptor attribute and EFI memory runtime, then it's a runtime descriptor. Okay. So allocate memory for runtime memory map. I'll do that. So the amount of data would be the runtime descriptors multiplied by the size of a descriptor. Yeah. Memory descriptor. And I want to have that in terms of pages. So I can, I can modulo and add one or zero, or I can add page size, which is a power two, page size minus one divided by page size. A lot of parentheses going on if I want to do this sort of better. Yeah, so that would get the amount of pages that is needed for all of the runtime descriptors. The number of, of stuff in bytes, so I want to allocate that much that many pages. I'll say runtime pages or runtime memory map pages, I guess, can equal that. Okay, and I can call allocate pages. That would make a new descriptor. Can't do that after exit boot services. Um, oh, well, I have allocate pages. Yeah. Pass in the mem map, pass in the pages, runtime, mem map, pages. So if I memory descriptor pointer, this would be runtime memory map, will be the start of memory for that many pages, if that works. Just say if not, runtime mem map, just for a sanity check here. do that. Uh, return. Okay, else we did get that. So I have to go through the runtime memory map that I have now, which would be basically this. But it'll be the runtime map size, which is going to be this and pages. That's that and pages. Yeah, I can do that. So runtime memory map size is going to be runtime memory map pages divided by the page size which would be what this is, runtime memory map size, and I'm using the same size descriptors, so that'll be okay. And this won't be EFI memory descriptor because this doesn't have as many bytes, so actually that would be a bug for later. I want to make the, the same size descriptors, so mem map descriptor size, okay. So run map, runtime map memory map size, over the descriptor size, that's the number of descriptors within the runtime memory map. So for each one of those, I'll get a runtime descriptor, we'll say, instead of mmap map, this would be runtime mmap. And this would be, well, that'd be the same descriptor size. Yeah, the runtime memory map that's allocated here I want to get the descriptors within there for however many runtime descriptors. So get the current one. And I'm going to identity map that. Even though I already did it up here, well, I don't need to. I identity map to my new page tables, but to give EFI firmware the new virtual address, I have to set the values within the descriptor to identity maps. So I'll say in each descriptor. So runtime descriptor 
physical star, it should be set, but I'll set virtual equal to physical. So virtual start equals the physical start. And that'll be all right there. So after identity mapped all the descriptors, then I can call <clears throat> I can call set virtual address map. Uh, set virtual. All right, Let's put that there. Okay, so I can set new set new virtual addresses for runtime memory via yeah set virtual address map, which should return a status. So yeah, you can say if I status equals that and have similar error code. be a one-liner. Uh, so say could not. I'll just do this at virtual address map call. Yeah. That's fine. I'll just do that. So what do I want to pass this? The memory map size is going to be the runtime memory map size. The descriptor size is going to be the same as the regular memory map descriptors. The descriptor version is going to be the same as the other ones. And the virtual map is going to be this new runtime memory map, which I put here. If I memory descriptor, if I memory descriptor, those are pointers. Yeah, those match. Okay. So that will set the new runtime virtual address map, and we'll see if that works. Just put it all on one screen there if you need that. So that's all I'm doing there. Running through the original memory map descriptors, getting a count of all the runtime descriptors, allocating memory for the map. So I need to go through and set them in that map as well. I didn't think about that. <laughs> Identity map all of the ones in each descriptor. Well, the map's going to be empty right now. I can probably mem set it to be sure, to be honest with you. So let's do that. So I'll memset runtime memory map. Yeah. Zero runtime mem map size. Okay. So I need to set the descriptors as well. So let's do that. Okay, so how do I do that? I would set the descriptor. So this is the runtime descriptor. I would need to get the runtime ones from the physical map, so I have to run through this again, actually. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's annoying. That's okay. I'm trying to think how best to do this. So if I run through the original ones, I can do this and set virtual to physical, that's okay. But I'll have to set the descriptors first. Okay. So set all runtime descriptors in new runtime memory map. Let's do that first. And then set runtime, well, I'll just call identity map. And then identity map all runtime descriptors in new memory map. Okay, and then this will work. So I'll just set virtual to physical. Okay, I just have to get the descriptors first. That's fine. So if it's runtime, we already got descriptors. That's okay. So I'm not using I'm not using that variable past this point so I can reset it. Yeah. Or I can set the current descriptor might be better. Okay. So this hive just as desk. Okay. Maybe I'll make that. Maybe I'll make that a memory descriptor. So 
we have the original one and we want to set the new one if it's a runtime. That's okay. I don't need to use that anymore. The runtime descriptor I'll get. Yeah, this actually does need to be uint in. So I'll basically just copy this. <laughs> Trying to think on the fly is kind of hard, even though I've done this before. This will be a runtime descriptor, and this will be offset from the runtime memory map. But we'll add, instead of i, because i is for the original one, we'll add whatever the current descriptor is, and we'll increment that. Yeah, yeah, so the current descriptor here, maybe I'll call it current runtime descriptor if that makes more sense that'll be an offset within this runtime memory map the original one here is an offset within the original memory map it uses i but the iterator if you will for this one is going to be this current runtime descriptor and we'll just plus plus that i didn't want to do that this so it's only used in these three places so it'll only be within yeah this loop here okay So what do I do for that? Since I have the position of the new descriptor that we're going to set, that can equal the other one, which would be pointers. So I want to set the memory in there. So I'll mem copy into that descriptor, the original descriptor for the size of the descriptor itself. And that'll put all the data over into that one. I could identity map that at the same time since I'm doing this right here. There we go. And I don't need two loops for that. So go through, loop through the original memory map, EFI memory map, all the runtime ones, now that I've allocated an initialized memory for a new runtime memory map, according to all the descriptors that were runtime, I'm going through and finding all those again. I'm setting those within the new memory map by copying the data over. And I'm making sure they're identity mapped by making sure the virtual address is equal to the physical because the number of pages won't change, just that that value, yeah. Okay, I think that'll work. And then current runtime is incremented only within this if, so when it finds the next one, it'll have the next one here and then increment it there, okay. And then we'll set the start of that for the runtime map, which will have all of its data set. I think that will work. Maybe, maybe not. Undeclared identifier. You went in. Pages. Okay. So again, this, well, I don't know if this will work now or not. Okay, that still works. Actually, <laughs> I need to check if the timer works because I set it to uh, wait three seconds and shut down. Okay, that still works. So that proves that we set the new runtime map before calling the kernel. And the kernel calls runtime services. So that proves at the moment that we can remap runtime services, at least identity map them, and it will still work within a loaded program. Okay, I did not set up new page tables, even though I had identity mapped everything within the page tables, so I want to do that. Uh, but before I do that, I also probably want to jump to and use a new global descriptor table, which for long mode for 64-bit is different from 32-bit protected mode, which I've done before. So I need to uh, refresh on how that looks, and I'll get to that and I'll do that next. So this will be, you know, a longer video because it takes me a while, maybe two hours. But I'll, I'll get the global descriptor table and then we'll set that. We'll have to use inline assembly or separate assembly. I may have to call the entry point within assembly like I've, I've had to before when testing. That's okay. I'll use the MS ABI. So RCX and, and BX will be used for the kernel parms and the entry point. Um, yeah, I'll set up a GDT. Not an IDT, I should just clear interrupts before doing that. So I don't forget. I guess I don't need that if I'm doing a single a single line. So we'll just say clear interrupts before setting up new GDT paging. 
etc. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is set up new GDT and task state segment, which is required. We can just make an empty one, but we still have to point to sort of data that exists in memory. So I'll set up those. And then I'll set new page tables. CR3 equals PML4. Set new page tables in GDT through load global descriptor table. And load task register maybe. Might need to do that as well. And jump or call. I'll just say call. Entry point with parms. So I can try to make sure that still works. And then after that, we can remap. Remap kernel to higher addresses. Okay, so I think I'll do those things next. I'm going to take a break and get back to it when I'm able. So thanks for watching so far. I'll see you in a second. All right, I'll continue the programming here now. I had a couple new things I added just to fix a couple bugs, and I added some more to-dos in the code. But we'll go ahead and look at what I did here. I marked them with new so I would not forget. When I'm setting the runtime memory map and I'm getting the size of the new runtime memory map that I'm adding the descriptors to to use for set virtual address map. So to get the size of that, I was dividing by the page size, which is not what I wanted. I mean, that would be the size in pages, but I need the size in bytes to sort of allocate a complete thing here. So if I want the size in bytes and not pages, I need to multiply the number of pages by the page size. Otherwise, yeah, that would not work. <laughs> pages divided by the page size would not be the right answer there, I don't think. So I should multiply that, not divide by it. When I'm copying over the descriptor from the regular EFI memory map into the new runtime memory map, I want to use the full size of the descriptor as well in case I'm missing data, because the EFI memory descriptor itself is not the full size or is not guaranteed to be the same as the size reported by the EFI memory map. So I need to use the actual size reported there to get the full a full amount of data copied over correctly. So that would have been a bug potentially later. And then the last thing is when I'm making the page table, I'm just initializing all the data in that table to zero for the top level, the level four. So that mapping doesn't mess up when it sees that things are, say, empty or not. If the present bit is not set, it should be a complete zero entry to start off with. So the present bit would not be set. Otherwise, there could be garbage data there. and this code may not work correctly. So I just wanted to allocate that stuff to begin with here. By allocate, I mean initialize. Initialize it to begin with the zero, so that would hopefully fix some issues there. Okay, so I added more to-dos here to, to remap the kernel, the frame buffer, a stack for the kernel, set up the global descriptor table and task state segment, sorted descriptors there, and then set up the page tables and the GDT, the TSS, and then we jump to the kernel after that point. So I did a couple to-dos. I don't remember what I had before, but anyway, we can go and try and add these things now. So if I want to remap the kernel, I would be remapping the buffer that it is loaded into to a different address, and then identity mapping that or using some other random higher address there. So a higher address I could use, let's say I put it at the top with the other defines, I'll say kernel starts address in higher memory, and this is 64-bit. So I would have, I don't know, kernel start address or something. <laughs> That's probably fine. That's a good name for it. So what would I want to do here? I'd want to have at least the top bits set. The top 16 need to match the 17th bit here if you want to look at it that way for canonical address for 64-bit paging. So this could be like a 7, or this could be an 8, rather, and all these would be zeros. Um, for higher half kernel memory, we can go higher than that if we want to ensure that the kernel and stuff only uses basically the very top of memory. We can just say everything below the max minus 2 gigs, maybe, is what we want to use. I've seen that used commonly. So that would be, I don't remember, what is what is 2 gigs? <laughs> I don't remember what that is going to look like. If I say output hex and give it 1024 times 1024 times 1024, so that's a gig times 2, and print that out. Okay, so that's 8 
And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven zeros. Okay. So I want to do all Fs and then that, I think, or all Fs minus that value. So this was an eight there. So maybe that, right? Because if we add on another eight and all the zeros, that would be up to F because it would be, well, minus one would be the limit of memory of all Fs, right? So I think that's correct. I don't remember. I might be one digit off here, which I can fix later, but that's essentially what I'm trying to do here. And I do want to make sure it's four kilobyte aligned as well for paging, but we'll load the kernel and whatever else it wants to do up to the, basically the highest two gigs of virtual memory. So that's why I'm doing this. Say so last two gibs of virtual memory. Okay, so it's canonical and doesn't mess with anything. All right, so I want to mess with, well, probably this function where I'm loading the kernel. If I want to remap the kernel, I basically, I need the buffer where it is loaded to. So not just this disk buffer, but the, the final output that I'm getting the entry point from, that allocated buffer within these functions, or just the disk buffer in this case. So I'm going to add a couple of variables for that. And I want to ensure that I'm loading to a four kilobyte address as well, which could mess up for flat binaries once we uh, set our new page tables. So the entry point here for a, a flat binary might not be four kilobyte aligned because I'm using allocate pool and not pages. If I use allocate pages as the, the memory allocation function for EFI, then I'm guaranteed to get a four kilobyte page or page range back and it'll be four KB aligned, which will work for paging. Those lowest 12 bits won't be set. So I do want to switch to using allocate pages for the loaded program buffer that I'm getting these entry points from, but I need a couple of other variables first. So if I physical address, I think was something, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I just didn't have that open, so it wouldn't have had autocomplete here. So let's say the kernel buffer or program buffer or something. Maybe kernel buffer makes sense here. And then I'll have something else. I need the size of the buffer if I want to remap it correctly. So I'll just have a uint n for that kernel size. And I know I have the size when I load the data and I'm, you know, getting getting the data up here anyway. But I'll just have it as an extra just in case. So I'm going to add these to these functions if I want to fill them out. I'll probably pass the address. I'll give them pointers. And i just move this up here so I don't have to repeat it for the comment. Okay, so kernel buffer and size, I'm going to pass those pointers so I can fill them out and they can be changed by these functions. Except for the disk buffer for a flat binary, I'm just going to set them directly to the disk buffer because it starts at the start of that buffer. So that is... Yeah, it's kind of not needed here, but I think disk buffer is what a a void pointer maybe. Yeah. So I'll have to change that. I'll have to cast my troubles away with that. And then the kernel size is going to be something. I have that data up here, I think. Or I'm checking the size for everything. I'm loading Disk LBA to buffer, yeah. So the disk buffer uses file size. Okay. So file size is uint in. I can do that. It's called file size. Yep. Okay. All right. I'll just say flat binary will start. Yeah. yeah we'll just say executable code. We'll start at the beginning of the loaded buffer. I'll just say that. Uh, I'll say is assumed, maybe not will. Assumed to start the beginning of the loaded buffer. All right. So these functions I'll have to change elf and PE to take in pointers. So let's say EFI physical address pointer, and this will be, I call it kernel buffer. You could call it, in this case, it's not necessarily for a kernel. I don't know, program buffer, elf buffer. Well, I already called it that. Uh, I guess right now it makes more sense to call them kernel buffer. So I keep things consistent. 
So we'll pass in pointers for those. All right, so when I'm loading the file, I have allocate pool. I want to change this to allocate pages instead to get a 4KB aligned address back, which I don't remember what the parms are for that. And I don't have it. I haven't used it yet. Oh, well, that would be why I don't remember it as well. <laughs> okay, we can add that in. That's fine. Conveniently, my past self remembered this, so I do have it open in my UEFI spec here. Allocate pages. So let's move that. Okay. Let me just have this open. So I'm going to put that above memory map, because that's the closest thing I have here. And I already have the memory attribute definitions anyway. So I guess I'll just put it above here. Yeah, that's fine. This stuff's in 127, so it would be above 723, yeah. Okay. So this is 721, and I believe I did copy it. Yes. Okay, so we have an allocate type, we have a memory type, we have the number of pages of memory we want to allocate, and we have the start of that memory, essentially. That's what the last parameter here would be. So memory type I should already have. Yes, and that's like, yeah, the loader code and data, runtime services code and data, conventional memory, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to move that where this is, just to be consistent with my definitions here, keep it where it's actually defined in the spec. The allocate type I do not have. So the number of contiguous four kilobyte pages to allocate, that's in the number of pages. All right, so we can use any range in the higher half of memory, basically, because the lower half, well, at least this range, seven to seven in all Fs is reserved for OEM use. So the manufacturer, the firmware distributor and all that. So eight to the upper range of memory, essentially all the upper range of memory is reserved for use by UEFI OS loaders. So we can use the upper range. So the higher half for mapping the kernel, for example, is going to be fine. Memory has different uses depending on type. Okay, let me get the allocate type first. Which I'll need here. Well, it's actually before memory type. So we have any pages, max address, address, and max type. And I already have memory type defined. Okay, so we get the number of pages, return a pointer to the base address of the ranges for those pages. We scan the memory map. Essentially, this kind of works as a different implementation to how I did the, the mmap allocate pages function, where just I scan the memory map for a free range. It kind of does that, essentially. Probably better implementation than, than mine, but, you know, that's life. So we should allocate memory and pool of loader data. I've run into issues testing ARM for people where ARM actually needed loader code for the kernel code that I jumped to. I guess it didn't have the execute permission set, it only had readable writable. Or their paging system or QEMU is set up differently for, for ARCH64 than, than x86-64. So I may try loader code instead of data, but generally if you just want data, yeah, loader data is fine. So boot services data for the drivers that are implemented. I don't think UREFI is a thing, and they should proofread their spec, but that's life. So allocate any pages should be any available range. The address pointed to by memory is ignored on input, so I'll probably use allocate any pages here. Max address is any range whose uppermost address is less than or equal to the address pointed to by memory. Okay, so if you set... Is that a pointer? <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, physical address pointer. So the value of this pointer... If you use allocate any pages, it doesn't matter. It'll set it on return. But if you set that pointer to an address and you use max address, you can allocate below that address. If you want to specify portions of your code or set to a, maybe to go with like a linker script or other things, you're like this range of values or this memory or the, the IDT or GDT or whatever in your kernel is between like four and five megs or something. You can set to where the max address is lower than a given range. But you can also say it starts at a specific range with allocate address. So if you set memory to 5 gigs, 
for the pointer and you give it allocate address, it should allocate to five gigs or really anything above eight and all zeros basically you can allocate stuff to. So that would actually come in handy for what for um, what I'm doing where I'm allocating to the upper, the last two gigs of memory essentially. You can give it that address and say allocate to here and just allocate your kernel file there. That would be an easier way to do mapping than what I'm gonna do, so I may switch to doing that later, but I'm just gonna show what I went with before in testing, which is not doing that. But I think that would work and actually be easier than what I'm gonna do. Keep that in mind, I don't do things the best way, regardless. But, um, okay, so where, where do I want to put this? Where I'm allocating, yeah, allocate pages. Let me just put this here. Uh, and I'll banish this to the Shadow Realm. All right, so I, I'll, I might put a note here, actually. I'll just put a note, not a to-do. May want to switch this for allocating a kernel to use, let's say, allocate address to put the file. Well, I guess to put the buffer starting at a specific address, g and higher half memory. I think that's good to note because that would make sense, but all right. I can try loader code and switch the data if it doesn't work, just because I'm saying we're gonna have allocated memory here for an elf program and a PE program and the other function. So I'll try code here, but we need to allocate type first. So I'll say allocate any pages, yep. So loader code will be my memory type. My memory needed has to be in pages. So let's say we have that. I'll say pages needed instead of memory needed. So we'll have max memory needed. And I can either do mod page size and then add one if I need to, if mod page size is above zero, or an easier way that I need to remember <laughs> is if it's a power of two, just add the power of two minus one divided by that power of two. And I just want to make sure that order of operations is held there. So if we add 4,095, essentially over 4,096, we'll get the accurate number of pages needed for, uh, for max memory. So this converted into pages. You can do it like that. So we need this amount of pages of this type. And it can be anywhere in memory. We just need a contiguous range. And the program buffer needs to be a physical address now. All right. So I'm going to have a local one here. Which, did I set it before? This is a void. Yeah, I'll just change the void into a physical address. Physical address pointer, just pass that directly. And then we can set the input kernel buffer here according to that if it works. Just set it to that value. So if we didn't have an error here, and we filled it out, mem set, I'll just, I don't need to, but I guess I'll cast that for the memory. Okay, and then we'll just set it here. So the, the input kernel buffer is a pointer, so I can set the value at that pointer equal to the program buffer, which actually, I'm just gonna make this a, yeah, a plain value, not a pointer. Okay, and then I'll pass the address here just in case casting messes up. And then I can just do this directly. So set it to that value, but we'll pass a pointer, which will be filled out. So that probably makes more sense semantically here. Because if I just pass the pointer value, it might change it and not propagate the changes back because passing by value and not reference is fun like that. So okay, we'll have the buffer, we'll have that. And then else we have the kernel size as the input parm. So I'll do that. And that'll be the size of the buffer, which was max memory needed. Or we could even do pages needed times the page size, which should be the same value as max memory needed, really. I don't know if that would be a different value or not, so I guess I'll use that technically, because that's what I'm using for the allocation, just to make sure. So, input parms, all right. So the other thing we have to change is the buffer where it's used because it was a void pointer and it's not anymore. It's an EFI physical address pointer, which is a UN64 pointer. So here, I 
think, well, this might be okay. I'm just casting it to U and 8. We'll see if this is okay or not. I'm not sure. I shouldn't, I shouldn't really have to change it because I'm just changing where it's casted and that's okay. So we'll see. I need to make these same changes to the load PE function and then I'll print out the values to see if they're actually accurate or not. So load PE buffer here. So it needs to be, we'll say kernel buffer. I probably could call it I mean, this makes less sense because it's program buffer. I could call it input program buffer or something. <laughs> File buffer. My naming's not great. Uh, I'm just doing this because if I want to use it later and it's not for a kernel necessarily, I want to make sure it's kind of more generic. So I'll change the names here, which is annoying. Sorry about that. Make sure the same changes are there. Okay. So I'll just change those. File. File buffer and size. Okay. And then those are only used as input params. So that's all right. Okay, so on the load PE side, we'll do a similar thing. Wherever I'm loading, allocate pool. Let me go back to where I was. Copy allocate pages over. And the program buffer, we're going to make the physical address. I'll just make it a regular value, not a pointer, so we can pass an address set. Oh, I will need to cast it, actually. Or change it. Do I need to change that? I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> so I'm changing that to a UN8 pointer. That should be okay, because the value is going to change, because I'm passing the address as a pointer to allocate. I don't know if I need to change it later. Right, we'll find out. Trying to think about possible breakage conditions. So I feel like I probably messed up somewhere, but oh well. We'll find out later. So the pages for this is not from max memory needed, it's from optional header image size here, size of the image. But again, that would be added to our page size minus one over the page size. And that should be all right. We'll allocate code because we're going to load it as code. If that doesn't work, I'll load it as data. That all should be okay. Cast that to avoid pointer for mem sets. Header size of image. Okay, then we can set the input. And I passed in pointers, didn't I? Yeah. Did I do that correctly in ELF? <laughs> File size needs to be de yeah, dereferenced. So that input yeah, is a pointer. They would have given me an error anyway, but that input is a pointer. So yeah, I have to dereference that. Okay. But again, that would be the program buffer. And file size is going to be, in this case, the optional header size of image, or again, I can do pages needed times the page size. Okay, so for PE files, do I have to change anything about the program buffer? It's casted to a uint8, so hopefully not. I don't know. We'll find out. So I'm passing these things. They should have values. I'm setting them directly there. Okay. Let's make sure before I go on to load that we have actual values here, just to make sure. And I'll say, I'll just say kernel. Kernel address will be the kernel buffer. I'll say size is going to be the size, and I'll say entry point. It's going to be the entry points. Maybe I'll put that on the next line, depending how big these are. Eh, we'll see. So the address would be kernel buffer. And yeah, that'll have a value size. That should be a four kilobyte aligned value. So that's a way to check if it's working. The size will be kernel size. And the entry point is still going to be the entry points, which I, I'll cast that just in case. OK, so undeclared identifier status. We'll just do that. That's fine.
and that's all I needed. All right, so let me go back where I was here. Print the debug. Oh, print the debug info. Uh, okay, kernel address for a flat binary size entry point. Okay, so that's not correct because the address needs to be a four kilobyte aligned kernel, but it does load. Oh, because I'm using, okay, I'm using the disk buffer. So in this case, I'm not allocating within these functions for a flat binary. Yeah, which is the issue that I would run into later because that is not a four kilobyte aligned address. So it's probably good that this happened. <laughs> okay, read disk LBAs to buffer. That has to change to also use allocate pages because it needs to return a four kilobyte aligned address. All right, so where am I allocating... I guess I'm returning a void pointer. Where am I doing return here? Buffer. That's in the case of errors. Am I doing anything? So I'm doing it there. Uh, read into allocated buffer. Okay. Allocate buffer for data. Here we go. So I'll change this to allocate pages. I don't have to remember with my brain because I can just copy paste, which is not good for my brain. That's all right. Instead of code here, I'm going to do data, because if we're just reading from a disk, I'm just going to assume it might be data, which that might not be good for the kernel on other platforms. You might need code for this. I would need a way to differentiate if I want to do executable code or not, or I'd need a way to set the pages to be executable otherwise. So maybe I'll have another thing here. Let's have a boolean and we'll say executable. I'll do that. Not, not a great way of doing that, but that's okay. So in this case, if I'm loading a kernel here, I'll set that to true. Yeah, we'll do that. Turns non null pointer and I'll, uh, I'll say if executable input parameter is true, then allocates EFI loader code, memory type else, use EFI loader data. Okay, just trying to cover all my bases here. So we'll say if executable All right, else we'll do data, so this will be code. Okay, so I need to allocate into a buffer, which would be and buffer here. And that is, what? <laughs> I don't pass that in. Buffer is a void pointer. Okay, well that'll have to change. The EFI physical address, which then I can return a physical address pointer. Yeah, so that should still be okay. I'll need to do this, and this stuff's running off the screen, but oh well. Okay. Shouldn't have to change too much stuff for that. We can still do buffer. We can pass buffer directly because it's just the pointer, but that's not really going to work because we'll need to set the address because it's passed by value because it's C. So we'll just pass the regular physical address, not a pointer. And then we can pass the address of that. Okay. And then we need the number of pages, which will be from data size. And that will be the data size, similar to the other thing, plus the page size minus one over the page size. Okay. And we'll allocate those. And if we had an error, we could not allocate the buffer. All right. So where else do I use buffer? I use it for read disk, and I don't remember how that looks. Do I have read? No. Do I have read disk? It's DIOP, which would be disk IO protocol. EFI disk read, okay. So out would be a void pointer. Okay, it can be converted to a void pointer, that's okay. 
and that's going to pass in a pointer, so I need to pass in the address. Okay, and then we'll return. So instead of returning buffer itself, we need to return the address, which is not great. Or we would return the buffer as a pointer. Yeah, I'd return the buffer as a pointer because the address would be on the stack and that wouldn't work. So, Or I could just return a physical address. Need to fix the brackets there. So where am I calling this? Just in one place? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think if I should just pass this as a direct, like not as a pointer, and then cast it elsewhere or change it as needed. That might make more sense semantically than doing than casting it and doing this, casting the value as a pointer. But I don't know, because I don't want to break like everything here, and I feel like I might be. <laughs> but I need to do, you know, 4KB aligned addressing, so we'll see. Whenever I return, I have to cast it, which seems like I shouldn't have to do that. I should make it so where I don't have to cast it. Probably a code smell. But if it's only in a few places, that's not too bad. So that's a disk buffer here. Disk buffer is a void, so this needs to be physical address. Okay. You and eight pointers equal to that. Okay. Just cast that because it's not a void pointer. Then I pass it into all the other files as well. Okay. I mean, I could still make it a void pointer, really. So actually. Because a void pointer will be converted, I think. And I want this to be generic. Okay, this is definitely not a good way of doing it, but <laughs> if, I, if I just return a void pointer, maybe that'll be all right. It probably won't be. But maybe it will be. So where am I returning these things? Down here, protocol handle. Okay, and then I can return yeah, just a void pointer to buffer. Okay, and that'll return a void pointer. All right. These things technically can be one-liners. This is just bad C code, but anyway. So that won't mess up the other thing, probably. We'll see if that works for found kernel file. I'm not printing anything else, and I broke it, so that's good. <laughs> that's what I figured would happen. Because I'm passing in the address of buffer. So I'm passing buffer as a void pointer. Yeah, I'll just return. I'll return a regular value just to make sure other things aren't bad. All right. That'll be easier. So instead of returning a pointer, I'll just return this value directly to make sure other things aren't bad. That's That's fine. And we'll set it to zero. This still needs a pointer to that, so we'll take the address. That's fine. This needs... Probably have to cast this to avoid, just in case. That has an issue doing that. Which might have been the issue, but that's alright. Okay. I love messing things up. Isn't it great, this buffer? We could see if it works here by just casting that. Put it to do so I can come back to that. So we're setting everything else from the disk buffer and they, those take in void, all right. So does that work any better? Does not seem to be the case, interesting. Uh, so it doesn't get to this point. Which is awesome. It does say it found the file. So I know it gets to here. File buffer. So where's file buffer come from? Here? 
Well, it got the size, actually. What values am I getting? The size and the dystopia. Okay, so that stuff's okay. It's this, of course. Um, I guess it doesn't load it correctly because it doesn't get back from the function. Maybe. Let's see. Test one. Love debugging stuff when I break everything. It gets to that point. All right. Let's just put it before and after. Test one and two. I only get the one. All right. So I know it doesn't get through there. And I'm assuming it's somewhere down here. I'll go after allocate pages. It does get to that point. Let's binary search my stuff here. Probably at this point where I'm reading the disk IO, it's not going to be good. Yeah, so, okay. Is it because I'm doing the void pointer buffer there? Uh, it gets past that point. Okay. If the buffer has a value, I probably should just cast that to a void pointer. That value, that would make more sense. Okay, yeah, that worked better, all right. Yeah, use the value itself there. <laughs> that would make more sense. Don't cast the address of it, because that would be an address on the stack that it reads into. That would be bad, and then this can be casted to a void, okay. Okay, so what does that look like? That looks better. <laughs> the kernel address is a four kilobyte address, EA1C. The entry point is at the start of that buffer, EA1C. And I press a key and it loads the, the kernel and shuts down after a few seconds. All right. So we seem to be good. I might want to change disk buffer to just a regular physical address value later instead of a void pointer. But right now, to stop changing everything, I, I can uh, be okay with that. I'll just keep this info. Print info, reloaded kernel. Okay, and we can also check, like with the elf file here and the PE file, to see if they have any different values. So kernel address and the size and the entry point are different values. The entry point doesn't necessarily have to be four kilobyte aligned, I don't think. We'll find out later, it might have to be. But right now, I think it's okay. It might not be okay later, I'm not sure. Portable executable, it has addresses E2D7000 and E2D9000 is the entry point. I might want to 4 kilobyte align the ELF entry point just to be sure. So I feel like that's not... That's not good. I'll just remove it and remake it. See if that was a fluke. It is not... Okay. So what am I doing for the entry point for that? Am I doing anything different, or is it just not 4KB aligned? I actually don't know. Passing back a void pointer, which, yeah, is what I'm doing. UN8T program buffer plus entry minus that. So that should be the same as what was happening before. And the new buffer, okay, just program buffer plus the offset. Yeah, because I'm getting the relative address. That should still be okay. I'm using file buffer here. Is there any other info it gives me on this screen? I just have offsets. Not really. Well, I can change that if I need to by messing with the kernel, I think. So the kernel.c file here, attribute section kernel, or in the linker script, but I don't need to do that for flat binary because I'm giving back a 4KB aligned address. What I can do, I think, is just align this value, which is going to be attribute. No, it'll be... Align as. I don't think that's a GNU extension or anything. I think I can do that. So let me try that. 
bunch of stuff I might not need to do, so <laughs> we'll see. I don't know if that'll change anything or break anything. That'll break everything. Expected parameter declarator. Okay. Maybe I don't know how to use a line as. That would make sense. Is it underscore? CPP reference? Yeah. To reader mode because I broke my line kerning and stuff. Uh, that's C23. Okay, so I need underscore capital A. Okay. And attribute only applies to variables and fields. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Section is dot kernel. Hmm. I wonder if I can set that a different way. Or I just don't worry about it until later. I feel like that's going to mess up, though. So I might have to research that later. Yeah. I'm going to look up if there's a way to do that to 4KB align the entry point, and I'll be back in a second. So see you soon.